Hello again, ladies. Uh, it's a blessing to be back with you again for the third time here. And uh, James was sharing with me the single gals are ready for an action plan so that they can um, meet the man of their dreams and have someone to walk through life with. And I understand that. But if we didn't have the foundation of the last two messages, um, you wouldn't recognize true love when it came because you've never experienced it, that unconditional uh, sense of love that doesn't change. And so I wanted that foundation in you so that you are love. You now have that divine seed of love in you when you accepted Jesus into your heart. And the fruit of that love, that union is as we discussed, and I want you to make a list. Love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, kindness, goodness, self-control, faithfulness. That's the fruit of living that life. And now that you have that life in you, and you're going to begin to produce that fruit in your life. And there's a law, the law of sowing and reaping. So now you are producing in your life, out of that divine seed in you, all those attributes coming from God. And that is going to create a life all around you. And as those seeds that you now are planting, you're putting behind you greed and selfishness and uh, jealousy and controlling other people, um, you're getting rid of that. Out of You might have some weeds you have to pull from planting those seeds before, but you're in that process and you're going to do that. And now you're going to l create this new life. James calls it resonance. Um, you're going to be resonating with truth and bringing that into your life and recognizing it in your life. So when you do meet that special someone, those two lives are gonna resonate and you're gonna know if he has true life in him. Because if you don't, then you are two people hurting, wounded, angry, bitter, not trusting anyone, jealous, always looking for the worst and expecting the worst. And then you come together in that union and the seeds of that life are more jealousy and anger and fear and controlling other people. So that's why those first two messages were so important. And there's another lesson, and I know for some of you it might be too late, um, but we talked about a blood covenant. Jesus came and gave his life blood for us. And we now are in blood covenant with him. I know our listeners in um, Iran and different areas like that, you understand blood covenants, the Jewish People understand blood covenants. It's more a part of your culture than it has ever been for us. But um, the, the uh, peace and the solidness of a blood covenant is uh, just something that is not broken, and especially when you make a blood covenant with God. <coughs> so I wanted you to have that foundation first. And then the second one is that when you are a virgin, before you've ever come to know a man, you were created with the ability in your body to make a blood covenant with a man. The first time you come together as a virgin with that man, there's blood. There's a blood evidence of this covenant of the two of you becoming one. And I know in our culture and many cultures that's been lost and
people just don't cherish that anymore. And what happens is you go from one person to another trying to get true love and never able to get it and you become um, wounded by these soulmate type uh, coming together, just two wounded people coming together and when you can't get what you need, you move on. And so I just had to address that. It's not too late because if you went through the steps of the first two videos, you are now basically a virgin again. All your sins, all your areas where you turned away from God, He remembers them no more. You're pure. You're holy. You're one with Him. You're a new creation. So look at yourself like that. And now we're going to be ready to go meet the man of our dreams. The first thing I want you to do is read over that list that I gave you on love and joy and peace, the fruit of your life, and make sure that you strive every day to recognize when you're not planting good seeds, when you're not seeing that fruit in your life because you want to resonate with love. And I want you to plant it right where you are today. I don't want you going looking for him. I want you to live right where you are in that knowledge that you are so valuable, so treasured, so loved, so whole and full of love yourself. You're not missing anything. It would be wonderful to meet that one that you can walk through and fulfill your destiny with. It's going to be great. But you're not lacking anything now, so you're whole. Then I want you to sit down and make out a list of all the attributes that you would like in him. And I want you to be detailed. We've been doing this for a long time, and one of the gals, she made such a detailed list that I had never even thought of this particular thing. But she even wrote down the tone of his voice, what his voice would sound like. And part of what I want you to do is make sure that you are always always in an atmosphere of whole people. You're not going to meet a whole person in a bar or clubbing or anywhere where wounded, hurting people are self-medicating, either with drugs or alcohol or um, stimulation of whatever kind they're doing. Whole people go to different places and venues and this young gal happened to be at a business conference and she was coming together with other business people to be successful in their lives and build a business of their own just in her element being herself being whole and she was standing in line checking into the hotel and behind her she heard the voice she didn't have to see him she just heard the voice out of her heart that was on her list. And when she turned around, he had the dark hair she wanted. He had the eyes she described. It was him. And she knew it immediately. There was a knowing in her spirit that they, that was the one. And as they got to know each other better, she just smiled as she checked off the list as she got to know him more and more. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to sit down and what kind of personality do you want him to have? Do you want him to make you laugh? Do you want him to um, just be romantic? Do you want him to have a good job at some particular thing? Do you, what kind of father do you want him to be? What kind of dates and things do you want to do together? Make your list. 
Put your heart's desire on that list. Those lists work, ladies. I made a list, not for a husband, because I already had one, but when we lived uh, in California, I just felt this sense. We, there was some place else we needed to live. Where we were living at that time uh, began to just not fulfill uh, all the, the peace that we uh, felt our home should have just because of the city and the atmosphere. So I sat down and I made a list for the Lord. I told the Lord I, I wanted a piece of property that had pine trees because I just love the pine trees. I wanted to be on water. I love to be on water. It's so peaceful. And I needed to be an hour from the airport because we travel a lot and I didn't want to have to get up any earlier, travel any farther than an hour to the airport. And then Jimmy, my husband and I just went about living our happy life. We didn't worry about it. We didn't fret over it. We didn't dig through papers. We just went about living our life, planting good seed. And everywhere we went, when we would get off an airplane, we would, if we saw it, we thought, this is really a beautiful part of the country. Then we would get a realtor. We would go look at houses that were on lakes and had pine trees. And it was like, that was fun, but it wasn't it. Even up into Canada, we even did it in Canada because we weren't limited by anywhere we had to live. And then one day, we were out, we had gone on a business meeting, we didn't have any time constraints to get home, we headed back to the airport, happened to pick up a magazine the, like for sales, the real estate, it was in the van taking us to the airport, and we thought, Let's stay and look at property. This is such a beautiful place that we're in. And so we spent a couple days just looking at property. And it was the last day we were about to leave. And we pulled up. This property wasn't even listed in the multiple listings. There was just a little for sale sign that you'd find in the store hammered on the gate. And we called on it and we drove into the driveway and the minute my foot hit the dirt, the Spirit of God quickened me and said, this is it. This is the property that was in your heart. That was 20 years ago and we're so happy here. It has the pine trees, it's right on the water. I have water on three sides of my home. It's like living on a boat. And it's exactly an hour from the airport. I laugh and I say, I should have shortened the distance to the airport because <laughs> it would have been nice to be closer. But God knows what your heart's desires are. So make that list, make it detailed, and then keep yourself in atmospheres where whole, healthy people are going to be. And for you ladies that are already married, do not walk away from the commitment that you've made. And doubly, 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 especially if you have children. Remember our word yesterday that God said, I knew you. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. He knows the needs in your heart. And he knew, he foreknew who you were going to marry. And there's nothing impossible with God. Nothing. So if you will take those attributes of God, the love and the joy and the peace, and you will commit yourself to living in that, producing that in your environment right now, where you are, in front of your children, in front of your husband, you 
become love. You live it. You produce it. And the fruit of your life will manifest around you. And hearts will change. Atmospheres will change. Lives will change. Because you have the very presence of God, Jesus, living in you. It's a wonderful love story. And I'm so excited to hear the testimonies as the list of your dreams come true. God bless you.